Welcome to Nonsuch River Brewing. Hey, how are you? How you doing? Great, thanks. Would you like something to drink? Uh, yeah, I'll have a non-such... Non-such! None Such, brought to you by The Holy Donut. I started homebrewing in my kitchen about 20 years ago, and then I moved out to my garage after I got married, because that's where you get to go, and started brewing out there and, and just, uh, Really loved it. I'm, I'm originally from Colorado, and it's pretty much drinking Keystone Light and all the 299 six-pack sort of things you could get out there. And I moved out here in '96, and uh, just a great craft brew scene. We had things like Katahdin Gold and and Carabasa Valley Beer and Shipyard and all these gritties, gearies, all these things that I'd never even been exposed to, and I loved it. So I bought my first kit, and. Uh, found a friend who shared an equal love of drinking good beer and, and making it. And uh, we started brewing together for 17 years or so and got pretty serious about it. About nine years ago, we'd be in the garage brewing and, and uh, we'd be like, wouldn't that be great if this is just our job? And uh, so we started an LLC um, a while ago and uh, started looking for the pieces to, to come together. And my first batch was god-awful. It, it was a, a brown ale that just was absolutely undrinkable. But I got through it. Uh, my second batch was a cherry stout, which was delicious. The, the best part about starting out home brewing is you were able to brew a lot of different beer without much risk. If I, if I brewed a cantaloupe stout at home and it turned out just god-awful, I'm, I'm out 88 bucks. Um, and I know not to do that again from the scientific standpoint. Tim was on one of the hockey teams with us and, and brought up a growl or a beer to him, well, to one of our, our uh, weekends away. We were at the Santa set for a hockey tournament. We've known each other around town and, and our kids are, are roughly the same age. We'd hung out at, at other tournaments but hadn't really had the opportunity to go, up, go out and do adult things and, and this hockey tournament there were quite a lot of adult things happening and uh, I brought uh, some growlers to help out with that and uh, so many adult things that were not allowed back at the Samerset. Right, yeah we tried to book the next year and uh, yeah, yeah, we weren't welcome. Not, not for you guys. Started pouring beer and Tim's like holy crap that's, that's great stuff where'd you get that? And, like my garage. So we started a little beer love affair together and uh, he came up to me after after one of the games and and said so are you really serious about doing this? You've been talking about this for years. You're serious about actually doing this? Yeah, I've talked about a lot of interesting projects with a lot of people and most people just like to talk. And I like to do stuff. And I thought this was a great opportunity to do something really cool that I've been thinking about for a long time. Uh, the town needs something like this. Moved back in San Francisco as a restaurant operator out there. And my brother was coaching football with Michael and Michael had a great idea to open up a brewery with Tim over here and they needed some guy to help run the restaurant and so my brother said well my guy my brother knows how to run a restaurant and we got together for a beer came up with a plan and started the restaurant With over 15 years of field experience, TRB Electric is a fully licensed and insured contractor offering services in the fields of craft brewing and distilling equipment systems, generators, heat pumps, security camera systems, energy efficient upgrades, and more. 
Craft Brewers. We have extensive knowledge of the brewing process to help you with your electrical needs. Based out of Westbrook, TRB Electric is a proud supporter of local businesses and are proud to have served many residential and commercial projects. Head to our website or give TRB Electric a call today. At Marvin Design Gallery by Eldridge Lumber, we're here to help you through every step of your window and door project. From design to installation. The team at Eldridge Lumber and the Marvin Design Gallery was so helpful when we decided to remodel our home. We couldn't be happier with our integrity windows. The fact that Marvin Design Gallery was my one place for both design and installation was really big for me. I would highly recommend Eldridge Lumber for anyone looking for both installation and design ideas. Visit us at our Portland showroom and see the Marvin difference today. So the Nonsuch River connects the five main communities in Scarborough over the last couple hundred years. The name Nonsuch is, from what we gather, you can't really tell where it starts and you can't really tell where it ends because it flows into the marsh and there's a lot of little headwaters way up on the Saco scarborough town line. And it kind of meanders around the whole entire town, taking a very indirect path to the ocean. And it's right in our backyard. When we wanted to create this, we wanted a place for the community to come together and the Nunsuch River was kind of that back in early times. It kind of connected the five major townships and communities of Scarborough, and we wanted to reunite them in this beautiful building with this great food and, and wonderful beer. This site was relatively infamous in the town of Scarborough, being known for one of the most dilapidated buildings in the town. There was debris, old antiques, trailers, lobster traps, broken down vehicles. You get the idea. We bought the property and we tore the building down and cleaned up all the mess in the yard. And then we started uh, with our site work. We started digging in the clay and then putting in our foundation and then the building went up from there. There was a lot of clay in the ground and um, during the course of the excavation uh, there happened to be a potter that lives in Scarborough who drove by and um, asked us if we needed to get rid of some clay which was kind of a joke because we had more than we could ever get rid of. I delivered some over to his house, dumped about 3,000 pounds of clay in his front yard and then he asked us if we would like uh, some mugs made up. So he proceeded to go to work and do a couple designs. Uh, out of our clay, and uh, this is kind of what, what, what came back of it. So that was a nice local relationship that, that we're proud of. I got in contact with Nunsuch through, they were doing tastings out of Michael's uh, place when they were getting going. I had gone by when they were breaking ground on the construction site and I saw all this marine clay is, is what we call it and looking at it and it's like you guys mind if I take some and it's because I uh, thought I could, I could use it. All the pots are hand thrown uh, that I make for them and, and actually all the pots I make in general are all hand thrown. None such is my first customer and uh, literally, is that uh, I approached them and, and because I used to do this for a living, um, and it, they've been great, basically. I showed them uh, some different prototypes, different stein, styles, and some different glaze options. And so then we, we narrowed the, uh, the steins down to um, 
what style they liked. They love the idea that it's all handmade, um, that there is, even though it's, you know, they're pretty close in size, there's a variety, even in the color, depending on um, how the firing is or where the pot is in the kiln, that changes the color based on uh, the airflow and the gas flow in the kilns. So they, they've actually embraced the uh, variety. Uh, it's close, but not all exact. Each one's individual. So, and that's, that's they, they appreciate the, the arts, they appreciate the local. Uh, they've been great to work with. I've been building for the past 15 years, and I'm, I'm always gathering ideas from past projects, putting them together, making sense of what works and what doesn't work, what's efficient and what's not. And um, I put a lot of those to the test when I built my house three years ago, and I used a lot of those same ideas and principles building and designing this. So picture, picture three guys in the dead of Maine winter. It's, what, 20 degrees out there on some of day. colder days? <laughs> yeah. Three guys erecting all of these beams with nothing but straps, a tractor, and good old-fashioned Yankee know-how. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd be at my warm job in healthcare and I'd call up Tim at the end of the day. I'm like, geez, I just walked to my car and it's like really cold out. And I was outside for like almost three minutes getting to my car. And Tim's like, ghost. <laughs> He'd be like, I've been out here for 10 hours and click. We wanted to have a large open space that could be compartmentalized. For instance, we have a second floor mezzanine which is great for private functions. We have an outside second floor deck, and then we also have the main area around the bar and the open kitchen, which uh, provides a more festive atmosphere. That also overlooks the brewery, which is located in the basement on the lower level. So welcome to Nonsuch River Brewing. So we'll walk you through the process and tell you what all this crazy stainless steel does. We've got a 15 barrel system, so we can brew batches of about 465 gallons per batch. And to put that into perspective, if you wanted to join the batch club and try and drink a batch of beer in a year, you'd need to drink 12 beers a day, 365 days, to get through that much. Where do I sign? <laughs> we had about 50 pounds of hops in our IPA about 10 pounds in our blonde. So when you taste the IPA, you'll be like, oh, I, I can taste the hop bomb. When you taste the blonde, you just taste the melding of it. What yeast does is it eats sugar, and it has a byproduct of CO2 and booze. A brewer can make wort, yeast makes beer. So that's where the magic really happens. From my understanding, this is Scarborough's only brewery? First and only. We are, as far as I can see, there's never been a brewery in the city limits of Scarborough for 380 years. Some people come in and they're like, well, I, I, I'm expecting pub food, but we've got a culinary trained chef who's running the kitchen and we've got some horsepower back there. So we, we like to say instead of a brew pub, we're a restaurant with a commercial brewery on site. But is it like seven days a week for you? It's strange. I, I lose track of the days. I, I know it's Saturday because it's busier, but it doesn't really matter. It's not like, oh, I've got to go to work Sunday. I don't have that dread anymore. I didn't even know. I thought this was just a brewery. I didn't even know you were a restaurant. It, it's, a, it's a nice surprise. Yeah, walking by the open open kitchen too. That food looks really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's that delicious. That's that's we were like, those burgers look so delicious. good. Right. Yeah. I believe that man has a primal instinctual need to eat smoky charred meat off of a bone. And there's something about that that just brings out his inner caveman. It's not just a way of cooking more than it is a lifestyle. And nobody ever says, come on over on Friday and we're going to have salad. Barbecue is America's cuisine. 
With over 80 years of service to builders and homeowners in Southern Maine and the advantage of $1 billion in national buying power, there's no wonder Elders Lumber is the fastest growing lumber yard in the Northeast. We offer delivery to job sites as far away as Massachusetts and Vermont, and our experienced staff offers estimations, consultation, design assistance, installation, and more. Visit us at our York or Portland locations and let us help you build your dream home today. Or visit us online at eldridgelumber.com. Maine is uh, the highest per capita in the whole country as far as breweries go and uh, we I uh, have a background I uh, used to work at Casco Bay Brewing Company back in the 90s when Michael moved to Maine and I was part of that first um, craft beer renaissance working with them and uh, I've always had a passion for beer I spent some time over in Europe uh, Germany and Ireland and uh, learned uh, what good beers is supposed to taste like and uh, wanted to be part of that when I came back to the States and then after hooking up with Michael and finding out the kind of beer that he made and there was definitely a niche for it and uh, we, we started planning. Um, we spent a lot of time talking and planning and planning and talking and drinking beer and then uh, we realized that we needed a food component and uh, we didn't want to be a tasting room. Uh, this town needs more than, than that. So we started looking for a restaurant tour and we're fortunate enough that Jeff moved back from San Francisco at just the right time. I had already heard about these guys. I came back from San Francisco and I was managing Applebee's and the manager, husband, was working with Michael and she's asking me, well you used to own restaurants in San Francisco. Aren't you going to ever do something on your own? It's like, oh, I'd love to open a restaurant in Scarborough. I think Scarborough is the community that's missing the niche and they need great food, they need a good dining facility and she brought up these guys. My friend is, they're trying to open up a brewery and restaurant in Scarborough, but they are? Oh man, I gotta get working faster to get open first. Because they're gonna kill it if that's what they're doing. Literally a week after I had dinner with them and we were talking about that, my brother calls me. I gave these two guys your number. Uh, I, I coach football with Michael, he's a great guy. I guess he brews beer. They wanna open up a brewery and restaurant. I, I just suggested you could consult with them. They called me. We met at the Great Lost Bear, ordered some pints. I remember Michael being like, I don't think this is the beer I ordered. <laughs> I'd be like, whoa, this guy's serious. <laughs> but uh, I think it was pint two, maybe, maybe pint three. I was, uh, I, gotta be, I gotta do this with you guys. Like, I gotta do this with you guys. <laughs> you know? it, is, it turned out to be a perfect fit. It's been a blast, it's been a blast. The community support, we're busy can't ask for anything better than being busy and the community being behind you about it. And then we've really lucked out with a great staff. Great guys in the kitchen, busting out all the work. In front of the house are all fantastic servers, hosts, bartenders. So um, it makes, makes my job easier when you have great people and then it makes it fun too. So we've kind of done a little take on wanting to get great food, all made from scratch, and a little bit of a twist on some pub items. We do have beer and we are a brewery. We wanted to focus on local, fresh food, putting some twists on things and just making it really good. We've been having great feedback. Great feedback on the food, they love the food. Great feedback on the beer. The beer is unbelievable. Uh, it's easy to drink. Um, the atmosphere, the building is just aesthetically amazing. Um, and everyone comments on those three things every time they walk in the door. When I'm not here, which isn't very much, <laughs> um, <laughs> not really sleep, but I do have two small children and a wife and um, love to play with my kids if I get that chance. And then uh, I do play hockey in the mornings with Tim. We're usually finishing up around 6.30, playing hockey. But um, it's been great. He's a, he's a competitor. And you can tell, you can tell he's a competitor just building this building and then not on the ice. And 
And it's fun whether playing against them or playing with them. It's a yeah. non-contact sport, um, hockey. Um, it's, it's really um, nice and easy and uh, relaxing. Relaxing. Um, and you know, we really try not to hurt each other. Yes, that's very the goal is to not hurt each other and to relieve some of our stress. We are at the Holy Donut in Scarborough, Maine. We are an old fashioned donut shop. We specialize in high quality coffee and handmade donuts from scratch. The Holy Donut is a family business. We started in a small way out of my kitchen, making donuts with Maine potatoes. We now have three locations two in Portland and one in Scarborough, and we still do everything in the same way, and the old-fashioned way, which is from scratch and by hand. With over 15 years of field experience, TRB Electric is a fully licensed and insured contractor, offering services in the fields of craft brewing and distilling equipment systems, generators, heat pumps, security camera systems, energy efficient upgrades, and more. Craft Brewers, we have extensive knowledge of the brewing process to help you with your electrical needs. Based out of Westbrook, TRB Electric is a proud supporter of local businesses and are proud to have served many residential and commercial projects. Head to our website or give TRB Electric a call today. Our energy is why we're successful. Our chemistry is why we're successful. Because we get along, we're excited, we're positive, we're happy, we're treating everybody the same way. It goes right down to them. We can, we can take a little credit for it, but we're just fortunate too that, that they're, they're the people they are. And um, Our staff is positive and happy and excited and they show up and they work really hard and we can't give up. Like We can't stop at all because we got them driving the train too. During the planning process, so we're open now, but there was two, two years, two and a half years of us having to work together and work through ideas and work through writing a business plan. conflicts. And I want that. I see it going that way. You want it that way. We got to figure it out. And we've we've yelled at each other a couple times, and we've we've hugged a lot more times than that. And and uh, so we never took it personally. Well, three is a good number too. It is three's better than two, and it's better than four. Yep. Yep. Can't but, team um, up. We all have our own <laughs> unique specialties that we bring to the table. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tell Jeff how to how to run his special menus, and I'm not going to tell Michael how to brew his beer. And we all have our each. Our, I tell him how to swing a hammer. <laughs> right. We all have our own um, roles, and they they overlap a little bit, but not a whole lot. And we all respect each other's roles really well, and enjoy learning about each other's roles. And so it's it's really a match made in heaven. It is, it turned out to be a perfect fit. It couldn't, this this, this team that we put together, um, it, it couldn't be better. I don't think I could have better partners that are more committed to, to making this happen. Um, obviously with Jeff's experience in the restaurant and Michael's experience in the brewing, it was a perfect fit. And the building that this guy built, man. I mean, people say, wow, from the street, what is that place? They come in here, what is this place? I just saw the building. Well, we're a brewery and restaurant. Oh, I can eat here? Yeah, well, come on in. Try the beer. Also, gotta mention one of the greatest feelings about opening a business like this, in a restaurant, in a community like this, is we created 50 jobs. What a great feeling that is that we can give back. And we've got high school students that are hosting and, and running and busing and working dish, and, and they're fantastic. Yeah, like Jeff said, it all starts from the top, and, and we're, we're here all the time, um, constantly, um, overlapping shifts. Jeff's here all the time. Michael and I come, go, and uh, it's good that the, the employees see us um, being part of this. We're not just absentee owners. We really, we're, we're invested in this. We care about this. We care about them, and uh, we're only going to be as successful as they are, so uh, it's important that we support them. Um, and give them all the tools um, they need to be successful. We've had tremendous feedback. Um, a lot of people come in and it's like, this is just what the town needed. They needed something that is theirs and they don't have to drive too far. It's conveniently located halfway between the schools and their house and the shopping and everything. So it's a good local gathering 
spot and uh, the feedback has just been unbelievable. Some of our biggest supporters are our founding members, the ones that seated us to get this thing going. So it's, it's even better that the majority of them are, live right here in Scarborough. They can bring their families here, they can enjoy something that they're, they're a part of. It's been 